we are joined uh, live from Rochester, New York here for uh, one of our very special uh, Jersey baseball show editions today, talking with Mike Adams. Mike is uh, one of the most amazing stories in all of professional baseball this year. And it, um, it's been a, a crazy 2021 that started off at, a, at, at MSI and a, at a, a Martin Luther King Day Pro Invitational Showcase. And uh, now Mike is, as we said, we're talking to him live from, uh, from Rochester as uh, he's part of the, uh, the AAA Iron Pigs, Lehigh Valley. And uh, Mike, maybe not what you thought 2021 would be at, at this time last year, but, but congratulations on uh, this amazing journey. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm excited uh, to be on here today, but thank you. Yeah. So, you know, let's, let's, I guess, you know, as, as much as, you know, guys locally, guys in South Jersey, maybe, you know, certainly the, 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 what you've done with, with BPC and, and, you know, the growing uh, role in the community there might know, but, but for our, you know, viewers here who don't really know the full story, um, you graduated from Wagner University, right? 2016. Yep. Yeah. 2016. Um, played a, a year of uh, indie ball, right? Um, and and let's take it from there because one of the guys you played with there uh, at Charlton, who I guess you knew from your South Jersey uh, high school days, kind of reconnected with him, and you know, you were a, a, a fair right Northeast Conference pitcher. You know, mm -hmm. probably right upper 80s. That might be putting it nicely, but yeah. Well, <laughs> um, and, but but probably at that point, I guess in you know playing and talking with Ed, realized that that kind of your your journey was going to go in a different direction, um, yeah. and, and kind of take us from there. What you started down in South Jersey, and you know some of the the you know crazy you know the, what the plan was at that point. Yes, yeah, so obviously um, Ed and I grew up together. We were from the same town. Um, we went to different high schools, but just played all types of sports together growing up. Um, and then we we're when we were playing indie ball together in Rockland, uh, we would always kind of throw the idea around of like, hey, you know, when we're done, um, we're going to start a facility together and, and kind of run with it. Um, and then we we finally got that opportunity, like in the off season, I was still actually playing indie ball. I was going to go back for a, a second season. Um, and Ed was actually coaching at Newman at the time. Um, so from there, you know, we got an opportunity, got a building. It wasn't the, it, it wasn't the ideal opportunity. Like it was a lot of work. There was a lot of, you know, we had to do a lot of construction on the place. Honestly, we had to do a lot of it ourselves, um, which was something completely out of our comfort zone. Um, but yeah, I mean, we started training local high school guys. Um, we had a couple of high school coaches in the area that would send us some guys. Um, and we started with them. We basically started with a a 40 foot cage and L screen, um, a plyo wall and, and a set of plyo balls. Um, and it was, you know, we're, we were in, we're in an, an old oil company. Um, so, you know, the, the part we used was baseball, but the rest of it was oil tanks, oil, um, anything in there, you can name it, lawn mowers, all, all types of stuff. Um, so we had, to, we had to clear all that out. Before we yeah, the way the okay. warehouse was it was uh, I guess next to or part of or your your dad's uh, the the yeah, oil so the, yeah so my uh, the family business is is the Ken Adams Oil Company so they basically you know do home heating oil and, and we use their storage building but I mean there's been storage in there for years <laughs> so we had to clean out a lot of stuff and, and it was yeah, a lot of work we, to we do, do some storage. floors and yeah make some stuff like put some lights in there um, so there was a lot of work. Um, for us and, and honestly at first I don't think either of it either of us really saw you know the potential there we were kind of like hey you know we're just doing this because uh, this is what we want to do and we get our feet wet and kind of go somewhere else but you know eventually we we got you know enough guys and you know my dad and my grandfather were generous enough to let us continue to renovate more and more space each time you know I feel like every month we we're like hey you know can we use this space and this space and they were like fine as long as you just get rid of the trash, then you could use it. <laughs> but that was that was probably the hardest part. They saw it as a way to get it cleaned out a bit too, right? Yeah, exactly. So so you're you know in in doing that, right? I mean, you 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 have this vision of helping guys on on their journey. Um, you know, this is where it gets kind of like uh, 
Jim Morrissey in a way, you know, Jim Morris, the rookie, obviously, right? Like he, he just, you know, he, he had the, the, the career and then he had his kind of in between and it was building himself up. You know, you, you and Ed obviously want to be, you know, whether it's there or somebody else, an elite training center. Yeah. And, and so, so you start studying guys who, who throw hard mechanics and, and obviously if you're going to teach it, you better know it. Yeah. Right. So you're, so you're kind of, you made yourself the human guinea pig here and, and, and just kind of your own velo just sort of build up and build up, I guess. Yeah. So, I mean, um, obviously m my goal in life, like when I was playing baseball always was to throw a hundred miles an hour. That's kind of the thing. And, and when we get guys in there that are like, you know, they're like, they want to hit 90 and I'm like, listen, we're all going to try to throw a hundred and hopefully we miss at 90 or 95 or whatever it is. But I'm like, it's, it's a, it's like, once you hit 90, like it's, you're not done there type of thing and just move, moving efficiently and, and, and moving as well and having as clean a patterns as you can have. So that was kind of like the plan was, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and understand what these guys are doing um, and then figure out how I can use that on myself to better understand it, to explain it to them. Um, because for me, I mean, even, even after like I saw, I, even like a couple of days before I signed, like the plan was not to make a comeback. Like it was really just to, you know, I was just trying to learn and, and I, I feel like, you know, you have a little bit more respect for someone when, you know, you go there for help pitching and they also can throw pretty hard and, and can do exactly what, you know, they're telling you to do. Um, and that's exactly what they do. Um, I just feel like that's, you know, big for, for getting guys to buy in and like understanding that it's not just someone telling them things that they've never done. Like it's stuff that I do and have done and, and still try to do all the time. Um, so that was uh, ideally the the plan was to to learn so I could explain and, and verbalize it to them better. Yeah, especially something like that. It's not like uh, trying to to teach somebody how to sacrifice bun or something. I mean, it's such yeah. a specialized thing mm -hmm. that if you don't have the feel for it, you know, I know that was uh, that's that's tread athletics as well. You know, they they're all their guys are active throwers. You know, there, there's no way to it's not like I can sit and tell somebody, this is how you throw a hundred miles an hour, you know? Yep. Right. Yep. So, so that, and, and I guess you're still playing at that point in the, in the, you know, whether it's a tri, tri County or it's wherever it, you're yeah, in, in the local men's league. Yeah. So the, the Atlanta County baseball league. Yep. Yeah. The other ACBL, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, and, and all of a sudden you're, you're putting up numbers you probably never have before, you know, 96, right. Mm -hmm. 90, 97, 98. Yep. Um, ever a thought in your head that, that something is going to happen as a result of this, other than going to get some pretty darn good kids coming into the, to the, <laughs> yeah, the oil warehouse here, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, honestly, I, baseball wise, no, it was just like, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, I'm you know, throwing 97 in the men's league. Like there's not many guys that throw that hard. I mean, every team that we play against is probably going to want to know, you know, how that happened. So I was like kind of excited about it that way. You know, we get some guys and they'd be like, all right, well, he throws pretty hard. Maybe I should ask him, you know, for some help. But yeah. baseball wise, I really didn't think so. I mean, I was convinced that, you know, I'm, I'm a 26 year old, you know, 5'11 right hander who has, zero like a half year of pro ball experience and I've been in the men's league for four years and I have no stats to back up that you know anything I'm doing is working uh, so I mean for me I really kind of thought that it was a long shot <laughs> um, yeah but, it's, it's about as long a shot as you can you know uh, right? I mean yeah there's there's not much more of a long shot than that so I mean yeah obviously on the comeback trail that wasn't even I really didn't think it was you know a possibility wow. And then you and then you throw in the, the probably the absolute worst timing possible, right? Minor leagues get kind of gutted, you yeah. know. Guys who have played two, three, four years in the minors are getting released. Sadly, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's cutting, you know, thirty jobs a team pretty much. Thirty jobs, a, you know, it's almost yeah. a thousand, you know, a thousand guys getting released out of the minors. It's uh, probably yeah. not if you were drawn it up. Probably wouldn't be the time to to do it. I would think. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. That's about, that, that was the other, the big reason was, I mean, it's probably the worst timing ever. You know, there hasn't been, yeah. I mean, for the, for them to sign me, they would have to think that I'm better than guys that they currently have. Like, and I don't know how they would, 
prove that. But yeah, I mean, especially having no season and them cutting levels and having, you know, split spring trainings, it's not like they're just going to, you know, throw, throw anybody an invite. Um, so that was, that was an, another barrier for sure. So, so you're, you know, and you were a business marketing major right at Wagner. Yep. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so I guess you, oh, so you're thinking what better marketing for, for my business here that, that I can hit upper nineties myself. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, Chase Petty comes along and you know, you, you said a little earlier, we're all going to try to hit a hundred. Well, he's past that somehow at age 17. And we all, it's, you know, there's, there's a, I mean, that's, if there's a, a, a you know, that's, that's the ultimate unicorn, you know, I mean, how does that even happen? Right. It, but how did you start working with Chase? Um, you know, it obviously came along at a time where, you know, business is starting to grow and, and, and what has it meant to, you know, a work with him on his journey, um, see where it's taken him, see him be a first round pick this year and, and start his own pro career. Yeah. I mean, obviously, um, Chase is a, a special kid for sure. Um, we got him when he was going into his freshman year. So right after his, the summer of eighth grade, uh, he was probably, you know, 84, 87, um, I'd say somewhere in that range, you know, just a, a, a pretty good athlete. Like he had a good arm, like didn't move crazy well, but like just, you know, just a guy that, you know, eat, sleep and breathe baseball, you know, constantly was playing games he played short he hit I mean he was the like one of the the best at everything at, at that time um but definitely you know it was crazy seeing the transformation for him because obviously he, he was pretty good um but I don't think anyone would have said hey you know this is a hundred mile an hour um first round pick um they're definitely been like you know this guy's a for sure d1 guy but I mean they're, they're at, like making yourself a a, a first round pick there's there's a lot that goes into that. I mean, you need to have the work ethic. You need to have, you know, the ability to command that plus velocity and a, and a breaking ball. And I mean, that's like something that you, you really don't, you rarely see as a, a high school kid throwing, you know, 97 to a hundred for strikes with a break, with a swing and miss breaking ball. Um, and and I, I, I won't even lie. Like I didn't, I never expected that um, when we first met him, especially, you know, being a little bit more of an undersized kid for a first rounder, but I mean, the, the the work he put in his journey it was was you know one of the coolest things I've ever been a part of. Yeah. Now, what is it? I mean, you grew up in South Jersey. You you got your your you know your high school ba- you know, your your baseball training, your education playing South Jersey baseball. Um, you, know, you go through a year like this, not just just Chase, but but Anthony being picked at the top of the the second mm-hmm. round. South Jersey uh, baseball, uh, fond of saying it, it just runs different. But you know, how would you uh, how would you describe it to somebody not from the area? <laughs> oh man, I mean, I, I know a couple, you know, a couple people always talk about how, like, I mean, even from when I was in high school, um, you know, over the last I would say ten years or so, it's it's really you know taken off. I mean, obviously with you know, everyone calls it the trout effect. Once you get picked from somewhere, there's always like, you know, there's always people down searching for the next guy in that area. Um, but I mean, when I was in high school, I want to say there were maybe four or five guys in, in South Jersey going division one total. Um, and, you know, you're talking your small D ones, like, like your Wagner's or NJIT type right. school. Um, but I mean, now you have, you know, nine to 10 division one guys on, on certain teams um, with, you know, St. Augusta and Ocean City, all those types of schools that don't carry that many division one guys. Um, but I mean, yeah, South Jersey baseball, it's, it's a hotbed. Um, you know, it's an area where there's not a, there's not a division one school that really controls the area, even though, you know, Rutgers is well on their way to doing that now. Um, it's an area where, you know, there's, there's a lot of talent. I mean, you're going to see, an 88 mile an hour arm, you know, every, every high school, every game. Every high yeah. school game that you're going to. Um, and, you know, 88 kind of a little bit frowned upon now. It's like, all right, that's cool, but it's not that fast. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, absolutely taken off. And I mean, obviously with Trout and then with, with Chase and Salamita this year, I mean, you're talking two first rounders or two top two rounders from, you know, uh, Southern, Southern New Jersey, which is, which is pretty, pretty sweet. So this is kind of where the story gets like, uh, I said, Jim Morris, kind of Rocky Balboa a little bit. Um, 
you know, we start 2021 and, and you even you just said earlier that, you know, even up to a couple of days before the uh, the MLK invite, it wasn't even a really a big thought in your head. Yeah. How did that come about? You know, where did it come about in, in, in your side? Like from from you, like, what the heck? I'm going to give this a shot. You go there, you throw, I guess, the 15, 20 pitches, you're hitting 98, Ed's tweeting out like, uh, you know, this is ridiculous, it's crazy, just kind of showing off at this point. Um, how did that come about and and what, how did that feel just being there doing that and then obviously the immediate aftermath, it, it probably was like out of body, I would think. Yeah, I mean, obviously we have, you know, a, a couple of my buddies that, you know, come down, the pro guys that come down and train with us, Brett Kennedy, who was in the bigs with the Brewers from Atlantic City, um, yeah. and one of my teammates from Wagner, Nolan Long. Um, those two guys, you know, we would train every, every morning and, you know, we would throw live and throw bullpens and they would always like, dude, you know, you should, you should give it a shot. Like, I know there's guys not or there's organizations that would, you know, like somebody that throws the ball like you and I'm like, listen, I'm 93, 95, you know, 5'11", like reliever. I mean, I don't know who really wants that. And then uh, one, one day Brett was, uh, he was down throwing a bullpen and, and there was a team there watching him throw and, and he kind of like gave him like a, you know, you don't guys don't need to watch me. You should watch Mike throw type of deal. Um, and they were like asking me how hard I throw. I was like, I threw like 97 in my men's league and they're like, all right, well, next time you throw, you know, let me know and, and we'll come down and watch. And I was like, I mean, I'll just get loose right now and, and throw. Um, so I just kind of got loose. I was in like, you know, long pants and, and a sweatshirt and I threw, was throwing like 94, 96 and, and got some decent adrenaline, like for the first time in a while. So they were like, yo, if you're serious about making a comeback, like let us know. And uh, I'm going to send this into you know, their farm director and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So then from there, it's kind of this big joke, like that I was going to get signed, whatever. Um, but then, you know, obviously all our guys go to the, uh, go to the MLK day. Yep. Um, and they were like talking about, um, they're like, Hey, you know, they, they use our, our track man for the event. And he's like, Hey, you know, um, you're letting us use a track man. Like you might as well just throw for free in the event. And I was like, I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to do that. And they're like, yeah, you're going to do that. And I was like, all right, fine. I'll, I'll do that. So then like, I mean, that was like two weeks down the road. So maybe for the next two weeks, I was like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll kind of get on a throne program for a little bit and take this a little bit serious. Um, so that's basically what happened. I uh, threw a couple of bullpen beforehand, you know, worked out. I mean, I really wasn't doing much of anything. Um, so, you know, lifted a couple of times threw a couple of bullpens went up there and then <laughs> threw the ball pretty good. And then, you know, that night, obviously I signed. So it was, it was kind of like a not planned, you know, we didn't prepare business wise at all for that. <laughs> and that's kind of the, the real story. So it, so it really, there was a lot of Jim Mars moments in there then, right? right. right. From, it was, I mean, it was like, right from guys know, talking was, you into going. Yeah. I mean, I don't know to say it was a joke because I mean, when I went there, like I was thrown seriously, but like, as far as me getting signed and, and working out to prepare for that, there wasn't really much much to it other than no. show up and throwing. <laughs> that's 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 crazy. It's uh, so it, it it kicks off an an amazing year that that goes. You before you get sent to Jersey Shore, you're down in in Clearwater. I'm guessing for a period yep. of time, right? Yeah. So I was down in Clearwater for spring training um, for about it was it was about a month long, probably. So, um, I mean, yeah, obviously, I haven't faced it. Uh, a hitter in a while so I mean you only in spring training just because of how it went this year it's shortened so I only got like maybe two or three innings and two of them were against you know just inner squads live AB so I mean even going into the season I was pretty uh pretty rusty as far as you know facing hitters and throwing pitches with hitters in there um so that was you know they they gave me some time to get my feet wet which was which was good yeah and and the Phillies were your team growing up right I mean that was always oh, yeah, your yeah. Team. Yeah, that, I, mean, I was a diehard Phillies fan. Everyone, you know, in the entire area in my family are all diehard Phillies fans. That made it a, a little bit of, a, of an easier decision. You growing up in the time where they they had that resurgence back with the uh, the Utley Rollins oh, yeah. uh, Howard era, oh, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That was like when I was in eighth grade at that point. So that was like you know, prime, prime so like what, middle of your lifetime. So what's the first like? This isn't real moment there <laughs> um 
I mean, de definitely in, in in spring training. I mean, the fir the first game was pretty cool. Like you know, you get to run out of run out of the the bullpen and go in there. Um, and and you know, my like you you don't even have they didn't have fans weren't allowed to come into the game. So like my parents were down there, but you know they had to watch from like between a fence like in the stadium. <laughs> So, I mean, that, that was pretty cool. And I mean, the first, the first, you know, the first time I, I threw pretty well, so they got to watch and I, you know, it was like a, a real game situation. So that was, that was pretty cool. Um, but I mean, just I'm at, honestly, the first time I was like, Oh man, like I'm really playing again was like when I was in Jersey shore and I, <laughs> I pitched the first outing and I gave up five runs and got one out. Yeah. Um, all right. I gotta, uh, I gotta stop riding the wave and start to lock in here a little bit. Yeah, so that, 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 was that was when it became real, right? That first yeah, that was, that, that was like, all right, you know, I gotta, I gotta get to work here a little bit. <laughs> so, so since then, I mean, it, it's been a, it's uh, again, I don't know that you could have scripted it better, right? A uh, one point two nine ERA through through sixteen games at Lehigh Valley. Yeah. Um, you know. I believe you did hit that triple digits finally at some point along the way. <laughs> that, that, that's yeah, that's that's what the what the track man says. So I'll take it. We know track man doesn't lie. So that's that's, <laughs> yeah. that's official. We can't even say juiced up guns anymore. Right. So no, I know. No, no. Guns are, are secondary. It's crazy. So let's let's start with there. I mean, obviously, that was part of your journey. Ever think that was going to actually happen? <laughs> Honestly, no. Um, I mean, Throw, throwing that hard and and you haven't gotten bigger right I mean you're not no, six I, three I, now, honestly, so. that's you know it's been pretty eye-opening for me about certain things because guys are always like you know how how did you do that like you weren't really lifting you know you weren't really taking it you know your throwing program wasn't too intense and I was like honestly it's just about the quality of movement it was kind of eye-opening to me as well because you know it like, like I said, like I, I was probably a little bit weaker. Um, you know, I was the same, I've been the same size this entire time. I, I wasn't lifting as much weight. You know, I really was super focused on how I was moving on the mound, um, what I was doing mechanically. And that's legitimately all that I was doing. Um, and it was kind of eye opening for them because I mean, a lot of kids are like, Hey, you know, I want to, you know, I want to add 50 pounds to my deadlift or hundred pounds in my squat. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you need a certain strength, like absolutely. But you need to be able to move that weight well and then you need to be able to translate that onto the mound um, and that's been the biggest thing I mean I think now I mean guys here all the time they're always asking like you know they're they're a lot bigger than me and you know they've been four or five years in pro ball and their velo goes up and down sometimes and I'm like dude like you know how's it happen I'm like listen you got to move really well and you got to focus like a lot of guys really focus on their lifting outside of the right. field and and I'm more like I'll focus on the plyos that I'm doing every day and how I'm moving on the mound um, and how it translates, right? And, exactly. and I think that's, you know, been really eye-opening to me and everyone is like, you know, all that stuff matters, but throwing and how you throw is always going to be the most important thing. I got to imagine this experience is, you know, again, you, you, you come in thinking a certain thing in 2016 when you start this, mm -hmm. but to change kind of the overall philosophy of, of the program at BPC, I'm sure this has got to be like uh mind altering career altering things and and kind of change your principles of how you teach yeah i mean honestly from when we started i mean there's something that changes every you know every month i'd say i mean that's that's kind of the beauty of it is there's like just constant growing and, and changing and adjustments that are made you know from having guys that you know you get guys that come in and every one of them has a different problem so like for me i've had to address you know so many different problems and it just helps me learn you know what to do when you get this or what actually helps it or what didn't help it. Um, and I mean, I, I think that's like, you know, coaches always ask like, how do you, you know, where do you learn stuff at? And I'm like, listen, the, the guys you have in front of you are, are really where you're going to learn at. Like, you know, something might help a guy it might make another guy worse. Um, so for me, it's that that's been huge because that's like something that, I mean, I feel like that concept of just movement patterns is something that, people don't always understand. And it's, it's a pretty like eye opening um, example of how that worked and, and, and why it works. Yeah. And, and I can, you know, even from afar, see that, that, you know, a lot of the stuff that you guys offer down there has kind of gone in that direction of, of mm -hmm. quality of movement and yeah. you know, how that, how that will translate over. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, every, every, every time you throw, you know, it, it's an opportunity to either, re-ingrain a good pattern or a bad pattern so like when guys are doing plyos and 
Um, you know, if you don't do them right, you know, you're, you're making 30 bad reps every day. Um, and if you do, right. and if you do them right, then, you know, that, you know, mechanical issue you're trying to fix, you know, you're going to have 30 good reps under your belt every day. So, I mean, getting your body to do what you want, you know, it's crucial every time, you know, you make a throw. So now we're a step away from the majors. And I know that that probably still doesn't sink in naturally or, or, or that often, or there's times where you're like, really, is this really? Um, but, you know, it's probably not as easy as everybody back home says, well, when are they calling up Mike and look at his ERA and they don't understand there's this thing called the 40 man roster. And, uh, you know, there's no more 40 man in September. It's, you know, you get a few extra guys and um, do things like that kind of just help keep you grounded and focused on on what's directly ahead have you kind of always been that way or just kind of realize that that's those things are so far out of your control your only thing you can do is just go out and shove every game yeah I mean that that I feel like that was one of the things that I told myself like you know when I wasn't playing I was like you know if I ever played again I, I'm gonna make sure I'm the guy you know that that's not too worried about certain things. I mean, I feel like in college, I was worried about getting drafted or, you know, how scouts thought I would looked out there and my mannerisms. And now it's, you know, from being out of it, I'm more along the lines of like, you know, this is better than my men's league. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to enjoy it while I'm here and, and try to, you know, focus on, on getting guys out. I mean, especially at this rate, I mean, yeah, constantly people are just asking and I'm like, I don't know. And they're like, well, do they say anything? And I was like, no, they don't, they don't say anything. They don't say anything at all. Right. Um, so, I mean, for me, it's just trying to continue doing what I'm doing and, and, and focus on that. I mean, obviously now um, the innings for me are a little bit more high pressured, you know, at, at first, you know, when you get up here, it's like, Hey, you know, you're just going to throw kind of whenever we need you in like the fifth or sixth innings. And now, you know, as the season goes on, like, you know, you're getting in there when you have the lead. So, I mean, everything's still changing for me. So, I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, focus on that and, and let that happen. But, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm a, I'm a Phillies fan too. So, I'm constantly watching the games and, and and you know, just half of our – when I got here, a lot of the guys that were with us now are, are up there with them. So, I mean, it's, it's cool to see those guys um, get the pitch as well. But, I mean, yeah, for me, it's just trying to continue to, to do my job and, and you know, whatever – Whenever, or hopefully, when that happens, you know, I'll, I'll be ready to go. Here with here with Mike Adams on this week's uh, Jersey Baseball Show, the 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 greatest story of, in the Philly system right now, um, for for a number of reasons we've talked about. You're you're big on, you know, everybody's got their own journey, um, you know, respecting that, appreciating that, you know, kind of guiding rather, you know, kind of helping them you know, steer the boat versus kind of pushing them along the way. Mm -hmm. I guess there's no more proof of that than what, what's, what's going on this year. Right. I mean, it just kind of adds that much more to those words. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, you know, I mean, even, even how I got up here to, to Lehigh was pretty, you know, uh, rare. I mean, just, I, I was in high for a little bit and then all of a sudden they sent me up here and now I'm here. So, I mean, I, I think it's just important for people to understand that, you know, it's probably not going to go how you would picture it or imagine it. Um, and, and that's, that's okay. Like that's, you know, that's probably how it's supposed to go. If it goes, you know, super linear, you know, that's probably, you're probably waiting for something to go up and up and down because that's just, you know, that's just life and, and how things work. Yeah. Love, love saying success isn't linear and, and, and you yeah. can't ever expect that obviously. It's not linear at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this wasn't what you're, 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 thought your path would be when you're a Wagner I'm sure <laughs> yeah definitely, definitely not but but honestly I'll I'll, I'll take it and that's that, that's the beauty in it I guess oh gosh yeah it's so so now again it's probably impossible to, to know exactly but you know coming into really your first off season as a professional baseball player especially at, at that level um what's the thought what's the plan how are things going to be different obviously you're still going to be spending time at, at, at the facility, but, you know, how do things change and, and how do you prep for, you know, your first spring training where you know it's coming? Yeah. I mean, obviously for me, I mean, it, it's going to be tough because I've, I've basically, you know, been putting everyone else's career first and now I have to, not, not that I have to put mine first, but I have to like, I actually have to do things, you know, 
to prepare myself, you know, which, which will, which will be a little bit difficult because I'm, when guys throw, I, I have a problem like with not helping them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, obviously a, after this year, there's a, there's a ton of things, you know, that I saw, you know, that are going to, that I'm going to do this off season to work on and, and be able to implement with the guys that we have. Um, and just, you know, I felt like when spring training came, you know, I was ready. I think the toughest thing was, you know, getting your arm prepared to throw on the mound every three days. I mean, we would go live like once a week and then, um, maybe throw a bullpen in between, but I mean, right now, you know, you're pitching in the game every three days. So I, I think getting your, getting the arm in shape, um, is definitely going to be something that we do a little bit differently this year. Um, so when guys get down there, they're not kind of culture shocked with, with the arm that it's they're you know, they're going to be ready for it. Um, but overall that, and I mean, for me, I don't, I don't really, haven't really taken any time off this entire time. So, I mean, I'm probably just going to go back into it and nothing too crazy off the bat, but just kind of keep the arm where it is and, and then, you know, get ready um, a little bit earlier for sure. Any thoughts growth wise or things that you're going to take back from, from this, you know, incredible year to, uh, to the facility for over the winter, you know, for the, for the guys. You know, yeah, they, definitely. I mean, just, I mean, just being on the other side of, um, baseball where performance is, is super important. I mean, right now for us, um, you know, we get to see guys in the setting where they're not facing a hitter and they're not, you know, um, competing. It's like, Hey, we're throwing a bullpen. We're looking at the metrics metrics. And I think, um, for us, it's just being able to, to help guys a little bit more on the performance side and, 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 um, how to, how to, you know, attack guys and how to handle like the ins and out of, of baseball. I mean, I feel like that's the toughest thing, you know, when, when guys struggle right now, I'm up here, feel like a lot of the time it's not, you know, mechanically or talent, talent based, you know, it's like just ways they're thinking and, and, and like their, their mindset all the time. I feel like that's really what, what changes with guys up here. Obviously there's, there's definitely some mechanical problems, but just that kind of stuff. And, you know, just what you need to be thinking about, you know, when, when guys get on base or, you know, when you give up a couple hits in a row, um, I, I feel like that was one of the biggest things for me is like, um, I wasn't really, convinced that my stuff was that good um even though like i know it's good metrically but being convinced that you know this pitch even if you throw it down the middle is going to get a guy out is just something that you know is tough for guys to understand unless they've you know seen that happen um so you, i think that had, was one of the biggest things you had you literally had you were coming into it with with zero evidence other than what you see metrically that my stuff can get major league hitters out yeah, it, that, that's basically exactly it. It's, it's like, all right, I mean, obviously in men's league, no one, you know, you're going to get guys out no matter what. Um, but here it's like, you know, you get you face some top prospect and it's, oh, well, count, like you're just going to groove a fastball middle. It's like at first I wasn't really sure that that was how it was going to go. I wasn't sure if he was going to hit a home run or. or feet, what was gonna sure. So, yeah, I mean, for me it was definitely like a the ability to actually trust my stuff and actually like be aggressive and like, hey, you know, if, if – if anything's going to happen here, I'm not going to, you know, nibble around this guy. I'm going to attack him and, and, and kind of go from there. So that, that's kind of when everything flipped for me a little bit. You think, I, I know your, your walk numbers were probably higher than you would have liked it at, at Jersey Shore. Mm -hmm. um, I think that might've been one of the reasons why. Yeah. I mean, for me early on in the year, um, when I would get the first batter out, I was great, you know, would strike two guys out in an inning, throw a clean one, two inning, but you know, when I got a man on, I was, I, I nibbled a little bit. Um, and yeah. then, you know, say they got second and third with two outs. I was the guy that like, you know, if it's a two Oh pitch, I would just kind of pitch around the guy and, and, and mm -hmm. I mixed in walks that way, just like walks where there's some open bags and walks where there's a man on second, two outs. And it's like, then when they hit a double in the gap, two guys score instead of one. So, I mean, that was one of the things that I, that I harped on and they were harping with me on. They're like, Hey, listen, like when there's men on base, don't give up that, don't give up that free bag, like get that guy out. Cause that, you know, obviously for us as relievers, like if you get the 30 pitches in an inning, um, you're, you're done no matter you're what. Done. So it's like, you know, if you, if you throw two 10 pitch ABs in there with a guy to a full count and you kind of pitch around him with a full count, I mean, that's, you know, that's half your outing right there. Um, so that was one of the big things is, and I think if you look at the numbers too, like I gave up five runs and three runs in my first like two games. So then after that, I was like, all right, you know, this is what I need to do. I need to just be aggressive. And if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down on throwing it yeah. and down the middle. Um, and that's kind of where, you know, everything changed a little bit for me. 
So a couple things to finish here. Um, biggest name that you faced at, at, at Lehigh Valley. And when I say that, I mean, again, you're not, you're not, not from a, I'm, I'm intimidated sense, but mm -hmm. you know, somebody that you remember when you were younger and a fan yeah. and, and now you're facing him as a, as a, as a pitcher at triple a. Yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, I mean, some of the bigger name guys, some of the tougher guys so far have been guys that, you know, just kind of got to the big leagues this year, like uh, Chris Giddens. He's with the Yankees. He's the first base. Mm -hmm. um, Frenchie Cordero. He's with Boston and Jaron Duran. They're both in the big leagues right now. Um, but I mean, probably the most notable name would be Derek Dietrich. Um, he's, we're playing them with Rochester sure. right now. I mean, but, but also I'm um, on our end. Ruben Tejada plays third base for us. Um, Odu Bulls played center and, and Didi's made a couple of plays at short when I was pitching. So, I mean, that, that's probably the, the, the coolest thing so far, but I mean, honestly, all the guys um, that we're playing have some, sh some sort of showtime. So, I mean, mm -hmm. every, every day you're, you're going up against somebody and that you, you know who they are. Everybody on your team or the other team at this point is, is good enough to, yeah. to be in the majors. It's mm -hmm. you know, at, at this point, I got yeah, pretty, it, it, it. It's pretty crazy. Um, you know, I mean, just, I would say probably 75% of our team, you know, have two or three years in the show at this race. This is obviously the, the a movie script, right? It's, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of wonder this is real. This is right. Um, I mean, the, the rookie's already been made. I don't know if Dennis Quaid is playing you. Who's, who's yeah. playing you? Who's playing Ed in the, in the, in this movie? Uh, every, everyone asks me this question and I'm, I'm, I'm really bad with movies and actors, <laughs> um, but I'm I'm trying to think of somebody somebody good. But I, I I really don't know. I mean, I, I would just I just settle for 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 a movie at all. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, again, Mike Adams, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, best of luck this weekend beyond. Certainly, hope for the call up. But uh, you know, again, the, the journey itself is is amazing and and awesome and and worth knowing and following. And best success with uh, with BPC this uh, in the off season. Certainly, I got to make a, a trip down at some point Absolutely. soon yeah. um, and uh again thank you for your time today yeah no problem appreciate you having me on anytime